بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبيه الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد. Today we want to look at the theme of wealth in the Quran, the idea of money or wealth in the Quran. It's an important discussion and the, one of the best places we can find this discussion is in the story of one of the richest people that ever lived. Allah relates the story of a person who was filthy rich, one of the richest people. We can't say the richest person that ever lived because Allah reminds him, if you think you're rich, in one of the verses, um, do you not know that there were people before you that had more than you had? So in any event, he's one of the richest people. Anyone know his name? Qarun, very good. So Qarun is one of the interlocutors of Musa salam. In the time of Fir'aun and Musa, there are a number of individuals that appear in that story in various contexts. Haman and Qarun and Fir'aun and Musa. So Allah says in Surah Al-Qasas, verse chapter 28 of the Quran, and this is a beautiful passage that speaks about Qarun that teaches us some amazing principles of, of wealth in Islam. So I'm going to share with you eight principles of what wealth is supposed to be in Islam from this particular story. So Allah says, Inna Qaruna kana min qawmi Musa fabagha alayhim Verily Qarun was from the people of Musa but he rebelled against them. So we learn from here Qarun was on which side, Musa or Fir'aun? So there are two sides here in the story, Musa and Fir'aun. The believers, the disbelievers. The people of Israel, Bani Israel, and the people of Fir'aun. So Qarun was kana min qawmi Musa. He was from the people of Musa, but he sided with the enemy. And that's very familiar, right? It's always been the case in our history, maybe now more than ever, you find people within our community that always side with the enemy. They're always fighting the Muslims, always fighting the cause of Islam. So Qarun was one of those. It was never any different in previous nations. So فَبَغَى alayhi means he rebelled against the, the believers, against the mission of Musa alayhi salam. And then Allah describes him. What was special about him? What, what was he known for? Allah says, وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ مَا إِنَّ مَفَاتِحَهُ لَتَنْهُوءُ بِالْعُصْبَةِ أُولِي الْقُوَّةِ Allah says we gave him so much wealth that the keys to his treasure houses had to be carried by many many strong men. Not that his treasure was so much that strong people had to carry it, just the keys that opened up the treasure houses that he stored his wealth in. And imagine how big is a key? How big can a key be? Maybe in the old days, you know, if you've seen, you know, uh, historical films and things like that, you have these big metal keys. So even the biggest key you can think of, it's not that big, it'll fit in your hand. So just the keys that opened his treasure houses had to be carried by so many strong men, not just average person. That tells you if that was the keys, imagine how much treasure he had. That's just an illusion. Allah gives us a glimpse into how much wealth that he was blessed with. But now here, what is the word for wealth that Allah used in the Quran? And just from one word, you can understand the entire summary of today's talk. You can understand the Islamic conception of wealth just from one word. So Qarun was the quintessential hoarder. He would amass wealth and put it away. He would save it, he would hoard it. So he was a hoarder. So he had so many treasure houses. That means he was just putting it away. He wasn't using it. He wasn't putting it into circulation. So Allah says we gave him so much wealth. But what's the word for wealth in the Quran? Mal. mal. Very good. So generally the word for wealth in the Quran is mal. Al-malu wal banuna zinatul hayat al dunya. Right? But here Allah doesn't say wa'ataynahu min al mal. He uses a different word, and that is very, very important. Why? What's the word that he uses here? Wa'ataynahu min al kunuz. Kunuz is the plural of kans. So kans means treasure. Mal means money. 
So, it's hugely important, the difference here. Mal in, in Islam, mal is wealth. It could be money, it could be cash, it could be gold, it could be things you put in circulation, but mal is something that's used. They give, the believers, they give their wealth out of his love, motivated by the love of Allah to the following types of people. So mal is generally the term used for you know, the circulation of wealth. Wealth that's meant to be circulated. That's the purpose of wealth. Wealth is meant to be used. Right? That's why Allah created it. So when wealth is, serves its purpose, it's referred to in the Quran as mal. And generally all the verses that speak about mal, there are almost 30 verses that speak about mal in general. But there are many other verses that speak about the idea of spending without the word mal. Sometimes Allah uses the word khair, goodness, mal. However, whenever Allah uses wealth, it's of it being stored away. It doesn't serve its purpose. It's buried. Allah uses the word kanz. Kunuz is the plural of kanz, means treasure. Even in English, money has a connotation and treasure has a connotation. The word treasure in English is very close to kanz. It has the connotation of buried, you know, the idea of buried treasure. Treasure is something you put away, you store it, it's buried. It's taken away from the public. It's taken away from circulation. So that's the difference. You know, it's the same, the item is the same. It's your wealth, it's your money. It could be gold dinars, it could be cash, it could be fiat currency, it could be cryptocurrency, it could be any type of wealth that we have in existence. But when it serves its purpose, it's called mal. When it doesn't serve its purpose and it becomes hoarded and put away, then the proper term is kanz. It's more like a, a treasure that's hoarded away. And that's something negative. So Allah uses the term kanz in the Quran in seven places. And the predominant usage of the word kanz is negative. So in this passage, Allah talks about Qarun, an enemy of the believers. And he says he's a, he's a, he's a villain, he's not a hero. So Allah says we gave him kunuz, kanz. There's another verse where Allah speaks about treasure, the wealth in the sense of, of, of being hoarded. And this is a very scary verse. Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الْأَحْبَارِ وَالرُّهْبَانِ لَيَأْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَيَصُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ يَكْنِزُونَ الذَّهَبَ وَالْفِضَّةَ وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Allah says, O oh, you who believe, there are many people from the rabbis and the priests that devour the wealth of mankind unjustly. They use their position to amass great wealth. And that's a negative thing. And they hinder people from the path of Allah. And then Allah describes, وَالَّذِينَ يَكْنِزُونَ الذَّهَبَ وَالْفِضَّةِ He says, and people like that, people who hoard gold and silver وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And they don't spend it in the way of Allah فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Remind them of a painful punishment that's to come for them. So in this verse, the people, the, some of the, the previous nations, their leadership, when they were misusing wealth and amassing wealth and putting it away, the term Allah uses, يَكْنِزُونَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ ذَهَبَ وَالْفِضَّةِ they, so they weren't spending it, they were just putting it away. That's a tendency among many people when they amass wealth, people are addicted to wealth, people are materialist, people are about this dunya, they just want to hold on to what they have. They don't want to give it up. They feel like it's theirs, they deserve it, and they, they just put it away. And they take it out of circulation and they put it away. And Allah describes that process as kunus. And the verb he uses, وَالَّذِينَ يَكْنِزُونَ الذَّهَبَ وَالْفِضَّةِ And then in the next verse, in the same uh, passage, Allah says, يَوْمَ يُحْمَى عَلَيْهَا فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمِ On that day, Allah says, remind them of the painful punishment that's coming for them. Allah says, on that day, that wealth will be heated up for them. That gold and silver will be heated up for them. فَتُكْوَى بِهَا حِبَاهُهُمْ وَجُنُوبُهُمْ وَظُهُورُهُمْ that heated up gold and silver we use to brand their body parts. 
their sides, their foreheads, their backs. And Allah will say to them, هَذَا مَا كَنَزْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ فَذُوقُوا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْنِزُونَ Allah used the same term three times here. He says, Allah will say to them, this is the treasure that you put away, kunus, that you put away with your own hands. So taste what you have put away. So the predominant usage of kunus in the Quran is negative. So kans is your wealth. If your wealth is used properly, it serves its function, it's mal. That's what it deserves to be called. But when you use that same wealth, and you don't put it in circulation, you don't spend it in sadaqah, you don't fulfill the zakat, then it's kunus, and it's something very, very dangerous. Now, the Prophet wasallam. if you look in the sunnah, you find the same pattern. Because the Prophet wasallam, he was a living, walking Qur'an. You know, his whole mission was to live the Qur'an and show us the Qur'an. So if you look in the hadith, when you look up the terms where kunuz is mentioned, it's the same exact principle. It's, it's a negative term. So I'll share with you just one hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari, where Allah says, Allah's messenger rather said, Man atahu Allahu malam. Whoever Allah gives mal. So he's speaking about a person, he's given wealth. And the term used, mal. So the Prophet said, whoever is given mal. Okay? فَلَمْ يُؤَدِّي زَكَاتَهُ And he doesn't fulfill his zakat. He doesn't give the zakat on that mal. So that man is given or that woman is given mal by Allah. And he doesn't or she doesn't spend it in zakat. And the, the rights that are due upon that money. مُثِّلَ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شُجَاعًا أَقْرَى That wealth will be personified on the day of judgment into a snake. And that snake will wrap the neck of the person and bite that person on its face and on its cheek. And that person will say, that snake will say, what was this, the end of the hadith? The snake will say, Ana maluk, ana kanzuk. So initially, the Prophet mentioned this man was given mal. But he didn't spend from it. And he didn't fulfill the rights of the mal. On that day of judgment, this is what's going to happen. And the reason for that punishment will be made apparent. The snake, the personification of that mal, will say, I am ana maluk ana kanzuk. I am your mal, which you converted to kanz. So this is very, very important. Just from this one word and analysis of this word, you can understand the whole idea of what mal is. Mal is meant to be used. It's a means. It's something to be meant to put into circulation. Now, in Qarun's story, coming back to Qarun's story, now we'll look at the specific principles of wealth. Um, Allah shares what a group of people reminded Qarun with. Qarun, with. Qarun you know, he was filthy rich. He put his money away. He didn't help his people. And he sided with Fir'aun. So there were people that wanted the best for him. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ So Allah begins this passage by saying, some of his people said to him, gave him advice. This advice was so beautiful, it's so insightful, that there's a number of verses, you can look at these verses and it gives you a complete understanding of what wealth is supposed to be in the life of a believer. So they gave him some excellent advice. Of course he didn't heed the advice, but Allah shared that advice, and we recite it, and we will recite it until the end of time. So, what's the first thing that they said to Qarun? إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِحِينَ First thing they said to Qarun, look, do not celebrate your wealth. Allah does not love those who celebrate their wealth. So the first principle is that you're not supposed to be attached to your worldly possessions. You're not supposed to get attached to your wealth. It's not something to be celebrated. It's not something to be infatuated by, intoxicated by. And to say today's society, capitalist societies today, in the last hundred years, the whole world is run by capitalist system. In capitalism, you celebrate wealth. People who are wealthy and rich, we celebrate them. We have TV shows about them. We have magazines about them. We have Forbes top, most of uh, the 10 richest people in the world lists. They're released at specific times every year. And every year people look forward to that list. And then they fight over the list. Even someone who gets placed number five, he sues the magazine for putting him number five. He says, no, I have more than this person. I should be number four. And the first and the second, they're always between, you know, people like 
Jeff Zebos and people like that, you know, or the CEO of this company or that company. And this is a celebration of wealth. That's what capitalism does. We celebrate financial success in society. It's not something to be celebrated. So the very first advice by these people, uh, the believers, the is la tafrah. Inna Allah la yuhibbul farahin. This is not something to celebrate. And we have to be very careful. Sometimes we're affected by that living in societies like this, even believers. We tend to privilege financial success and showcase that and something, you know, we were so proud of that when someone's successful. Yeah, when you're successful, that is a blessing from Allah, among the blessings of Allah. But as a general rule, financial success is not something to be celebrated. It's not something that makes one person better than another. You know, of course, you should be in a position of helping others. That's much better than being in a position of need. But celebrating is a whole different level. Or, you know, being infatuated by that. So the first principle of Islamic economics or, or, or in the Quran is... You know, do not celebrate your wealth. Do not be attached to your wealth. And what did these people say next? If قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَحْبُ الْفَرْحِينَ The next advice is وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ They said, use what Allah gave you to seek your abode in the next life. In this verse, you can derive three principles. The first thing, وَابْتَغِ Use your wealth for something. So the second principle is that wealth is merely a means. It's not a goal. It's a means. They were reminding Qarun, look, whatever Allah blessed you with, use it as a means for something else. So this is very, very important. Many of us, our goal is just to be rich. You ask little children, what do you want to be when you grow up? What, what, what's your goal? I want to make six figures. I want to have a six-figure salary or a seven-figure salary. That's not a goal. The goal is not to be wealthy. The goal is not to attain wealth. The goal is to be in a position where you can help yourself and help others. So, wabutari, seek, use your wealth as a means. So that's the second principle. And then, fima atak Allah. Now, they said what Allah gave you. They reminded Qarun, use what Allah gave you for something else. So they're reminding him the third principle is that you're not really the true owner of your wealth. No one owns anything in this life. You are given custody for a temporary period of time, and then it goes back to Allah. Everything we're given is a gift of Allah Azza wa Jal. Even the wealth that we earn by our own hands is a gift from Allah Azza wa Jal. That's very, very important to understand, because that changes your perspective. You see your wealth, see your possessions, see everything you have as a gift that Allah gave you. You have temporary custody as a trial. Then you realize, you know, you have to live differently. Even our bodies, when we die, what do we say? What do we say when, when someone passes away? Allah reminds us, قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ When someone passes away, your loved one passes away, we remind ourselves, well, we came from Allah and Allah took us back. We always belong to Allah. And He took, it, he took whoever's time was written, He took that person back. Same thing with the wealth that we have in our hands. It's just a temporary possession. We're not the true owners. Allah is Malikul Mulk. He's the true owner of everything. So, وَبْتَغِي فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهِ That's a, the, the second principle in this verse. Your wealth is not really yours. It's in your custody as a trial from Allah Azza wa Jal. And then the third part of this verse is وَبْتَغِي فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهِ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ what do you use your wealth for? They're reminding Qarun, use your wealth for a purpose. What was that purpose? Ad-dar al-akhirah. You're building your life in the next world. That should be the purpose of wealth for every believer. The primary purpose of your wealth, of what you attain, of the blessings you have, is to build your dar al-akhirah. It's nothing else. Everything else is just like temporary. It's so wealth's primary purpose is for the next life. The believer's entire life is geared towards the akhirah. That's what the believer is. We're given this, this life just for a few days. Hassan al-Basri used to say, Ya ibn Adam, inna ma anta ayyam, kullama dhahba yawmun dhahba ba'aduk. You're just, O oh son of man, you're just a bunch of days. Your whole life is just a bunch of days. Every time a day passes, part of you is gone forever. So we're just put on this earth temporarily. Our main goal is Darul al-akhirah. And that's what we should use our wealth for. 
Then the next piece of advice. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا And do not forget your portion of this life. Your nasib from this dunya. So now, here, they were reminding Khan, look, there's nothing wrong with enjoying the blessings Allah gave you. Just keep in mind, it's a temporary enjoyment. It's a limited enjoyment. It's not an unlimited enjoyment. But you're allowed to use the wealth and use the blessings Allah gave you. And don't forget your share in this life. So, this is very, very important as well. Where this is, Islam doesn't preach monasticism that all wealth is bad, all material possessions are bad. And we have to give up everything. But, in general, the primary goal is the akhirah. And then while you're doing that, don't forget you're sharing the dunya. Now the way Allah phrases this is the next principle, principle number six. I forget where we're at. But principle six, the sixth principle would be that the dunya and the akhirah is not the same. It's never equal. It's not 50-50 split. It's not even close to a 50-50 split. If you have a friend that comes to you and he suddenly makes it big, you know, you're not supposed to play the lottery. Suppose he hits the lottery, he has $10 million. He comes to you, what should I do? Or someone, you know, just comes across tremendous wealth from an inheritance. They might come to you for advice, look, I have $10 million, what should I do? We would tell them, look, take care of yourself, take care of your needs, do everything you need to do, but don't forget to do donate fi sabilillah. Right? But what does Allah say? That's not the way Allah said it. Allah says, use all of it for dar al-akhirah. But don't forget to keep a little bit for yourself. See the difference? We would say, use it for yourself, but don't, to give, don't forget to give a little bit in donations, in fi sabilillah, in charity. But in the verse, it's, it's the opposite. Use all of your wealth for dar al-akhirah. But in that process, don't forget to keep a little bit for yourself. So this sixth principle is, always prioritize the akhirah over everything else. It's never 50-50. Don't be fooled by the zakat percentage. We say, well, it's 2.5%. That means you keep 98% and you only give 2.5%. Zakat is the bare minimum that puts you in the door of Islam. You don't have the zakat, you're not Muslim. That's what Abu Bakr believed. There's some people, they said, well, we, we believe in Allah, we believe in the Messenger, we're going to pray five times a day, but we're not going to give zakat. He said, you're not Muslim. He fought them until they submitted. Zakat is the bare minimum. It's not the maximum. So many Muslims look at it as the, as the maximum. Beyond zakat, you have so many means to give. You're supposed to give. Every, like yesterday, we looked at the principle of ithar. The early believers, they gave everything they had. Even when they didn't have, they would give. So the priority is always the akhirah. Don't ever you know, get your priorities mixed up. It's not even 50-50. It's primarily akhirah. And then don't forget to take care of your needs in this dunya. So what is next? Wala tansa nasibaka min al dunya and then wa ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk. Principle number seven, treat people with ihsan. They reminded Qarun, look, treat people with ihsan the way Allah treated you with ihsan. What is ihsan? Ihsan in a nutshell in this context is giving people more than they deserve. So you have adal and you have ihsan. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. Adal is justice. Giving people exactly what they deserve. Ihsan is giving people more than they deserve. So does Allah treat us with justice or He treats us with ihsan? All the blessings we have in our lives. Is it because we deserve them? No. Surely not. Everything we have in our life, Allah gives us more than we deserve. We don't deserve anything. But Allah gave us so much. Allah treated us and keeps treating human beings with ihsan. But when it comes to other human beings, we want to give them the bare minimum. Exactly what's due to them. So he's reminding Qarun, look, the better principle of life is treating people with ihsan. Giving them far more than they deserve. And then the final verse, وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ Do not seek corruption in the earth because Allah does not love those who sow corruption and turmoil in the earth. Fasad. That's the last piece of advice. And how does it fit here? Because predominantly wealth leads to corruption. That's the un unfortunate reality. There are very few exceptions. There always were very few exceptions. 
When people become filthy rich, generally they become corrupt. It's never been any other way. Doesn't mean we're not supposed to seek material blessings, or we're not supposed to seek being in a position of dominance, being in a position where you can help others. But history bears out that predominantly wealth always corrupts human beings, it corrupts nations, it corrupts companies. All the wealthy companies, even in capitalist societies today, although they do some charity, they do some good work, but predominantly they write the laws, they bend the laws, they don't pay any tax. The richest companies in the world, I mean, when I was preparing this lecture years ago, um, at that, uh, it was about six years ago, uh, it was in the news that Amazon did not pay a dollar of tax. The richest company in the world, nothing you know, by taxes. And then same thing with like, you know, the politicians, they always give these incentives to the richest, the filthiest rich. When you get to a certain critical mass of wealth, then the rules change for you. And you begin to write the rules, you begin to buy politicians, you begin to engineer wars, you begin to do all of the things you see in the world today. So why? Because wealth inevitably corrupts. Generally, it corrupts. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ, he feared for his ummah wealth. He said, I don't fear shirk for you, but I fear for you wealth. That's something he was so scared about. He didn't want the ummah to be filthy rich, because he knew that comes with tremendous trials and tremendous corruption. So these are some of the principles, amazing principles of wealth we learn from the story of Qarun. And from Qarun's story, um, what happened in the end? Um, what did Qarun say? These are the principles that were given to him. Did he say, okay, good, uh, let me think about it? No. Qala innama utituhu ala ilmin indi. His answer was, everything I have is because of my knowledge. I deserve it. I did it. My effort my knowledge. So he was someone very corrupt and then he did not heed the advice and after they gave the advice this was his response and then the final straw for Allah Azzawajal was when he came out فَخَرَجَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فِي زِينَةِ He came out decked out into you know like a military parade style where you know you have these parades and nations they show off their missiles and all these things so he was showing off his wealth in a parade, showing off everything that he had in a public display of arrogance. And then when that happened, his people split into two. The people watching, they're on two sides. قَالَ الَّذِينَ يُرِيدُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا يَا لَيْتَ لَنَا مِثْلَ مَا أُوْتِيَ قَارُونَ إِنَّهُ لَذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ One side were the people who wanted this life, materialists. يُرِيدُونَ حَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا they said, oh, whoa, I wish we had some of that wealth. When you have filthy rich people today, they have a lot of people around them. They just want a piece of the pie. So that's, that's generally how it works. So these people just wanted some of that wealth. And they were just like, you know, they're expressing that sentiment. We wish we had some of that. You know, I, can, I would just kill for having one of those gold bracelets. Just, you have hundreds of millions, give me one million dollars, I'll be happy. So this is one side of his people. And then the other side, where the, so this is the people, the materialists. Yuriduna al-hayat al-dunya. And the opposite side of the materialists would be who? What do you think would be the opposite side? So one side, those who love this life. The other side, you would imagine, would be those who love the akhirah, right? But what does Allah say in the verse? وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ on the other side were the people of knowledge. So the opposite of materialism is knowledge. True knowledge, ilm. So the opposite of these materialistic folks were the other side, they were the people who had true knowledge. What did they say? They said, Wailakum. Woe unto you. Why do you say that? Thawabullahi khayrun liman amana wa amila salihan wa la yulaqaha illa sabirun. They said, What the wealth that Allah has for you is far better than what you're seeing here today. And that's for those who have iman, those who have amal salih, they do good works, and they have sabr. وَلَا يُلَقَّهَا إِلَّا الصَّابِرُونَ And then in the end, we know what happened with Qarun, that's the end of the story. فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ فَمَا كَانَ لَهُ مِنْ فِيَةٍ يَنْصُرُونَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُنْتَصِرِينَ What happened? The earth split open, swallowed up Qarun, and all his riches, and he was never seen again. And he was never seen again. And there was no one there to help him on that day. 
So this Surah Al-Qasr is an interesting surah. It's uh, about the prophets. The first part of it is the story of Musa and Fir'aun. And then the second half here is the story of Qarun. So if you look at Fir'aun, what was his end? And look at Qarun, what was his end? It's very different, right? So the first part of this surah, you know, is Musa and Fir'aun. What was the end of Fir'aun? How did he perish? He drowned in the Red Sea. So what was his crime? His crime was political tyranny. He proclaimed himself Lord over the nation. All these anhar, all this land belongs to me. Ana rabbukum al-a'la. When you have that kind of tyranny, the punishment fits that crime. Allah, what did he do? That person who felt he was the owner of the whole Egypt, all of Egypt, who owned everything, the Lord of all the people, Allah made his end in such a way that even the earth would not take his miserable body. The land of Egypt kicked him out, spit him out. Outside of the land and he drowned outside of the land in the sea. Qarun, what was the difference with Qarun? He was a financial tyrant. And money and finances and mal is generally the gold and silver. Where does it come from? It comes from the earth. So he was benefiting from everything that comes from the earth. You know, people are filthy rich. They're gold, silver, oil, all these things, the minerals, diamonds, everything comes from the earth. So his end appropriately was that the same earth that he benefited off of, that same earth swallowed.